All right, man. So I'm just gonna record this video. I'm seeing how it looks like, but I want to talk to you guys about how I feel like Afrocentrism in its modern day is kind of ruining the black community, bro. Like, and I'm I'm and I'm gonna be very honest with you guys, right? And it's not Afrocentrism as in like the actual real Afrocentrism that was started back then. I'm not speaking necessarily about today's Afrocentrism that I see, like with people claiming to be ancient, anything, to be, you know, um. <sighs> I don't even know where to start, bro. People claiming to be aliens, Aboriginal Australians, like the list goes on and on and on. Basically, if I don't agree with you, if I don't agree with you, I'm talk, I'm talking to you, bro. And I feel like you know the thing is that um we're misleading people and that we're confusing black people about black history. You know, <clears throat> I'm I'm definitely interested in getting your thoughts and opinion on this first question. Um, I heard some recent discussions you were involved in about if uh, you know the idea of Black Egypt, and many were using the term Afrocentrism. Um, not you, but many were using the term Afrocentrism as if it means to make ancient cultures black who were not black, like a, a thing of blackwashing, I guess, uh, when it's really an intellectual framework from Malefi Asante that approaches history, culture, politics from an African worldview. Uh yes, this is something that has been going on for quite some time. And there's uh, a lot of literature that uh, expresses, you know, basically how to combat that and to more properly define what Afrocentricity is, Afrocentrism, and the like. And so what, what appears to happen, because what people don't understand is that Afrocentricity is a paradigm within the discipline of Africology. Mm -hmm. And so it is a, a research paradigm, an approach to analyzing uh, text as well as individuals who write the text concerning issues regarding uh, African people right. in, in all spectrums of life. So what the lay person does who doesn't study Africology as a discipline, what they'll do is say that any and everybody who talks about black or African people is an Afrocentrist. Right. <laughs> you know, it's almost saying like anybody that works on a car <laughs> is a, uh, is a physicist. Oh, this was an interesting comment here, right? Th this is obviously somebody who did not like what we talk about here it, on, on the video I'd done about the Kimites who were just the ancient people who ruled the land that is called Egypt, what his response was, I'm here for the pseudo Afrocentric BS, which my first response to it is, I'm not offended by saying that I'm Afrocentric. There's nothing wrong with somebody who is descended of Africans seeing the world through an Afrocentric lens. That's actually the most normal thing in the world. I think the problem that he's having is because maybe my uh, uh, thought process is different than his, that I'm wrong and that he's not really, that his own thought process by nature is probably Eurocentric or uh, you know, Asian centric or whatever your your upbringing, your background is. Isn't that just normal for all of us to see the world as our background tells us? Well, I mean, why do you call us African Americans then? Well, exactly. Exactly. Uh, you know, so I guess my response to that is we should be proud of who we are. Everybody. Every, right? Period. Yeah. Period. Okay. Period. And so having a a a Afro Dr. Carter, I was going to ask for a definition of Af Afrocentrism and, and why we need it. Looking at the world from an African uh, viewpoint, uh, many of our textbooks, uh, uh, the lectures that are conducted at, from the university level through um, uh, the K-12 system are really based on the European classics with very little mention of what uh, Africa and what uh, Africans uh, have contributed to world civilization. So it's merely telling the truth 
about the development of uh, world civilization. Africans uh, played a tremendous uh, part in the development of, of the world, uh, from Kemet, which is known as Egypt, uh, the first universities, the Temple at Luxor, uh, was a university where uh, the Greeks and others came to study. And My co-workers, I don't want them to hear me. I didn't really want to say this when I was outside of my job, but it wasn't really the trips to Africa that made me who I am. It was really my mom. She raised me Afrocentric. Like I couldn't have white dolls, I couldn't eat white bread, none of the walls in the house could be white. You know, so I realized that as I grew up and started working that I had to pull back and I couldn't be as vocal. So when I'm on the clock, I'm Amanda Smith. But at home, a Verant video. If you're new to my channel, welcome, and I really hope you enjoy my content. If you are a regular, you probably already know that my agenda with this channel is to spread knowledge of the ignored, neglected, and misunderstood aspects of black culture and history. Not just to black people, but to everyone of every race and from every part of the world. However, there tends to be a toxic trend among many black African enthusiasts or Afrocentrists trying to assert outrageous claims towards our people and our history. Unfortunately, comments like these tend to find a home in my comment section every day. These comments do more harm than good and just make the world and our own people have even less respect for our culture and history and make channels like mine, which actually bear factual information, less credible. Immediately on the, you know, it says parts of the politics series on Pan-Africanism. So African Afrocentricity and Pan-Africanism are naturally like interchangeable. And in conversation, you often hear this, whether it's with um, <clears throat> people that call folks Hotep and they'll say it's a bastardized version of Pan-Africanism and Afrocentricity. And th these things, things kind of just get collapsed or even what people think is Hotep, whatever that means, um, the reactionaries essentially becomes this um, <clears throat> caricature of all things Pan-Africanism, all things Afrocentricity. And they have the African beads and they might have the Kofi on and they talk like this, you know, we going to unite the, da, 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 you know, or whatever. And, they, and it just becomes a caricature. And I don't, I think the problem is that it's not, it's not clear. It's not clear what these things really mean. Afrocentrism for many in the Western world has taken on the role of the villain throughout intellectual spaces. This particular school of thought has advanced some controversial topics. Despite the controversy, however, I've never really actually heard anyone speak about how Afrocentrism began. When it comes to Afrocentrism, the powerlessness of it leaves it undefended and open to constant ridicule and attack. But what is the actual history of Afrocentrism? Ironically, it began as a response to the ills of Eurocentrism. After these figures, Afrocentricity was also built on the intellectual work of the Senegalese historian Sheikh Ante Jope and the black arts movement theorists and historians of Africa. In the 80s and early 1990s, Afrocentricity garnered mainstream attention with its challenge to classical European history. Great controversy was caused by two arguments emerging from the Afrocentric school of thought. The first asserted that Egypt was the foundation of black world culture and history, just as Greece was the foundation of Western civilization. The second argument, and the one that really caused more controversy, asserted the idea that Egypt was a black civilization that served as a major philosophical, intellectual, and cultural foundation and inspiration for Greece. At the height of the debate, Newsweek magazine featured a stone image of Cleopatra wearing a red, black, and green African earring, and the cover read, Afrocentrism was Cleopatra black. Facts or fantasies? A debate rages over what to teach our kids about their roots. Interestingly enough, Afrocentrism has evolved as many of the old held ideas have changed concerning the identity of Cleopatra. Some of the leading intellectuals that supported and developed Afrocentric thought were Malefi Asante, Maluana Karengo, Asa Hilliard, Theophile Obenga, and many more, including some women like Professors Vivian Gordon and Klonoa.
the big struggle for people who see themselves as Afrocentrists and still hold in their mind the highest esteem of the people who came before us is that you can't distance yourself from a name that people worked so hard to give such a good reputation. And to be honest, for a while, we had the moral high ground. But like the previous video said, we get no defense in public media. Instead, we get the most radical of people standing to defend us who can't defend us. I'm not going to play this video, but you remember that video where they were talking about Cleopatra being black? And the black guy they brought on almost said nothing to defend this view, while the other person claimed that they were Afrocentrists who had a good intention, but then now have turned into basically villainous creatures. The unfortunate thing about that is that Afrocentrism had not changed, really, not at least in the intellectual spaces. But anyone who asserts any claim under the Afrocentrist umbrella is taken as the most serious component of Afrocentrism. Therefore, regarding this movement as a easy word that you can just place on someone and say, get him, he's an Afrocentrist. Unfortunately, as you can see, many pro-black people try their best to distance themselves from this. It would be easy if we were merely distancing ourselves from the word. But the problem is we have to distance ourselves from people who are pro-black, but they make crazy assertions about how every single population in the world, every civilization in the world, was founded by black Africans. The problem with this is that it makes it impossible for these people who, as you can tell, half of them were like, no, Afrocentrism is a good thing. It's a good thing. But I can't deal with the other side. And therefore, they have to distance themselves from it. And it's so unfortunate. Because even Jabari, who I covered in the other video, and I think he kind of mistook Afrocentrism and he pointed out parts that I think are good about it and he made it sound like they were bad. I think the thing about it is, if you see his video on Japan, he states that he is open to the idea that Japan was founded by East Africa, by West Africans. Now, he goes out of his way to distance himself from the Afrocentrist movement. But the problem is, this puts him firmly into the Afrocentrist movement. And this is the problem. No matter, no matter where you go, there is no room for mere checking, mere speculation, because everything is you're an Afrocentrist stop. Now, personally, and I have to state this, I do not believe that West Africans founded the Japanese civilization. I think it's far-fetched. If there's proof, prove it to me. Some people say that the words in West Africa are similar to the Japanese words. I have found words in my own language which are similar to Japanese. But I did something that I think a lot of other people have never done which is I checked other words in Japan that are similar to words in my language, but in the opposite. So in other words, are there words that mean the exact opposite to what some of the words in my language mean? And I found a few. I found words that mean almost nothing alike, but they mean opposite. Just like hi in Japanese means... Yes, 
and hai in my language means no. Mina in Japanese means everyone. Mina in my language means myself. This shows me that this is a mere coincidence and that the coincidences will go with any direction you choose if you want. Just pick anything and you will see it. It will keep appearing. This is because Japanese, just like a lot of African languages, is vowel consonant, vowel consonant, vowel consonant type of language. And they have other similarities that makes this happen. But like Jabari, I'm open to having my mind changed. Having your mind open to this makes you an Afrocentrist. Metatron, who believes now that some Egyptians would have been black, doesn't realize that in some people's minds he is creeping into Afrocentricity. Luckily, I wanted him to distance himself from that word as well. And nowadays, it's getting more and more popular to do that, as you see in this video. But what will happen in the future? Will they take our claim seriously? Or will they continue to associate us with the most extreme parts of the word? And like some of these videos said, there is nothing that humiliating about being Afrocentrist, especially if you look at the past. The problem is we get bad press. Bad press means I know people who don't know anything about African history who've talked to me and they all go, what are you, some kind of Afrocentrist? And like I said, Afrocentrist is used by the layman as a slur. A slur means that you will be dismissed immediately. Attach yourself to any word you want, but do not complain when I said I warned you that these people will not take you an inch serious. Look how serious some of the people that we've been talking against have taken some of these arguments now that we've dropped the word Afrocentrist but in, and instead forced them to engage with our theories. And I believe every Afrocentrist should engage in that way. And yes, I am aware that the ramble that I just gave you guys has a ton of, not backfiring, what's it called, contradictions. The reason for this is because we find ourselves in a precarious situation where we can't decide where to go. And so I just distance myself just like some of these other people do.